Congratulations on your decision to install a glue down cork floor from Jelena Cork. As with all natural products, cork will expand and contract with changes in heat and humidity, so it is important to have your cork floor tiles acclimate to your home environment for at least 48 hours prior to installation. This installation will also use cork and plywood underlayment, which also need to be acclimated to your home environment. Jelena Cork offers a wide variety of glue down tiles with square or beveled edges. In the case of this installation, a 6mm thick tile with square edges was delivered. The homeowner decided they would prefer a beveled edge with the tiles placed on a 45 degree angle to the walls of the room. The cork tiles can easily be beveled using a table saw. As you can see, the cork tile has a natural curve when placed on a flat surface, which if run through the blade of the table saw will cut an uneven bevel. An easy fix is to cut a piece of 1 quarter inch MDF to the same size as the floor tile, place it on top of the cork and run both pieces through the saw together. This keeps the floor tile flat to the table saw surface and allows better grip area to keep your fingers away from the blade of the saw. Here is a close up of a tile that has completed the beveling process. While your cork floor is acclimatizing, you have some time to prep the room. The room getting cork in this instance has an existing carpet which must be removed. The homeowner will also be installing a new baseboard. The carpet, pad and tack strips all need to come out. The pad is usually stapled at the edges. If so, they can either be hammered down or pulled out. Either way, the subfloor needs to be as flat as possible. Prior to beginning the installation of any underlayment flooring, it is necessary to cut the door jams. This enables the new flooring installation to fit snugly under the jams, giving the appearance of having been installed before the casework. To do this, simply stack the underlayment layers and floor tile, place them next to the jam, and cut. There are a variety of electric tools that make this task very simple, but the same result can be accomplished using a handsaw. If your new floor will be butting up against an existing floor, the transition will likely look the best directly underneath where the door would cover when closed. In this case, cut the door jam midway and remove the cut section using a chisel. In the installation shown, the cork underlayment simply gets placed on the subfloor. It is recommended to stagger the edges of the cork underlayment with those of the subfloor. The plywood underlay is positioned on top of the cork and stapled with narrow crown staples. Follow the installation instructions provided by the plywood underlayment supplier. It is important to check to make sure that all your staples are fully set. If not, they will cause a bump in the appearance of the finished floor. Once the underlayment is installed, make sure the floor is cleaned in preparation for the next step. Even though the plywood underlay seems smooth, it is a good idea to apply a skim coat to fill in the staple holes in any open seams. Many products are available to use as a skim coat, but we recommend one that is an aggregate free, polymer modified, cement based finishing underlayment. Mixed per the manufacturer's instructions typically yields a working time of about 15 minutes, which is enough time to do a fairly large area, but try to mix in small enough batches such that it remains workable. The idea is not to cover the floor, but to fill any voids. Try to work quickly, but do your best to eliminate trowel marks and large clumps. The better job of troweling at this stage makes the next prep stage easier. If the trowel job leaves the floor uneven and may be necessary to sand the floor smooth again, being careful not to sand into the plywood underlayment. In the case of this floor, there are only a few minor imperfections which were dealt with using a scraper. After scraping, the floor now needs to be thoroughly vacuumed. Tile placement should be done in a manner that makes sense based on the shape of the room and the tile being installed. In this installation, the tiles are approximately one foot by one foot with beveled edges and are to be placed on a 45 degree angle. The starting point was chosen by finding the center of the door and extending that point along the depth of the room. This line will be the guide for the top and bottom points of our rotated tile. If there are other focal points in the room, or the floor would be visible at all four walls, it might be preferred to place the tiles such that all edge tiles are uniform. The preferred adhesion method for glue down cork floors is water based contact cement. Follow the directions from the manufacturer, but essentially contact cement works as follows. Both the tiles and the underlayment on which the tile is to be placed will receive contact cement. When the contact cement dries on both surfaces and they are touched together, they will be stuck. Lay out as many tiles as you have room for on a drop cloth, face down. 
and roll the contact cement using a paint roller and leave to dry. We have found rolling in both directions ensures better coverage. It is very important to glue all the way to the edge of the tiles. Using the same roller setup and a paint edger that you would use to paint walls, apply contact cement to the underlayment, working your way back to the door so you don't paint yourself into a corner. All contact cement manufacturers have a recommended working time with the cement once it has been applied. Once the contact cement has dried on both surfaces, it's time to install the floor. When the two surfaces touch, there is an immediate bond, especially if any pressure is applied, so it is important to have the floor tile where you want it before applying pressure. Each tile should be rolled with a J-roller as you go along, not necessarily one at a time, but after every few tiles get installed, they should all be rolled. This ensures good contact with the subfloor. Double check the edges and bottom of each tile to make sure nothing is stuck to them, as this will cause a bump once it is installed. Also, check the underlayment to make sure it is free of debris for the same reason. This clip shows a standard procedure for installing a floor tile. All four edges were inspected, then one corner placed on the subfloor. The edges matched up with the existing tiles, then the rest of the tile placed onto the subfloor. Then using a J roller, rolling towards the already installed tiles, pressure is applied, ensuring that there are no gaps and that the tile is fully adhered to the subfloor. Here, the installer has noticed a small piece of cork embedded in the contact cement on the subfloor. Rather than tile over it and risk a bump showing on the finished floor, he's decided to move it. Even though it seems small, it will create a bump in the finished floor. You will likely have several odd shaped tiles to fit into place around corners, around door jams, etc. Rather than transfer measurements and risk incorrectly cutting your floor tiles, we make a template out of parchment paper to handle these unique situations. Works every time. All the tiles are in, now you have to make sure the floor is very clean for the next step. Following a thorough cleanup, a water-based seal coat can be applied right after installation. The function of this coat is to fill the voids in the floor, which will prevent the wear layers from soaking in. Make sure to block all vents to prevent heat or air conditioning from blowing across the floor. Follow the manufacturer's application instructions. When the seal coat is dry, the floor will appear more shiny in some spots than others. Don't panic, the two coats of water-based polyurethane will even out the appearance. Once the seal coat is dry and following manufacturer's instructions, the two wear layers can be applied. We recommend using a water-based polyurethane.
Once the urethane layers have dried on your floor, it's now time to add some trim. As mentioned previously, a transition strip may be required where your new floor meets an existing one. In this case, a T-molding is installed, overlapping each floor, creating a nice transition. Some carpet may need to be cut back and the T-molding cut to fit around the doorstop. The T-molding can be installed by nailing or using a constructed adhesive and using weights until the adhesive dries. The existing baseboard was removed for this installation, but sometimes it is left alone. In that case, a quarter round or cove molding should be installed to conceal the cut edges of the tiles. Depending on the thickness of your new floor, you may need to trim some or all of the doors in the room. In the case of this installation, the new floor is about the same thickness as the old one, so no trimming is required. The doors can be remounted and the job is complete.